What's up guys, it's CJ from SmartKTai.com. In this video we're taking you on a tour of the Motorola Droid X2 software. We already covered gaming and the features of the 8 megapixel camera in previous videos, so be sure to check those out if you haven't yet. I'll post links in the description of this video. So that leaves us with the user interface, widgets, apps, web browser, and so on. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so let's begin. I'll go ahead and pull up the lock screen. Pretty basic lock screen. We can slide this bar over to toggle uh, between different sound profiles and of course slide to the right to unlock. First things first, we have seven different home screens that we can uh, swipe between. Of course you can add various widgets and apps and shortcuts uh, to these home screens as well. Now if you know a particular home screen you want to jump to without having to swipe between them, you can actually drag from the bottom up and you get this home screen selector. So right now we're on screen number three. Say you wanted to jump to uh, screen number six, you can do so just as, like that. Of course, you can also press the home button, and then if you press it again, you get the same selector that way. So let's go back to number two here. Uh, if you look up at the top, we have the famous Android notification window shade for you guys with uh, iPhones out there hate to break it to you but Android had it first but it's all in good fun I'm happy that you guys are finally gonna get uh, a proper notification system so one thing I want to point out here it's kinda of subtle but if you pull the shade down you can see that the transparency level actually changes so right now you can kinda of see through it and then when you pull it all the way down it gets a lot dimmer so kind of a cool effect that I noticed uh, that's not there with some other uh, devices from various manufacturers. So if we move over, I guess we're over on screen number two here, let's check out some widgets. So uh, I already have some widgets loaded up, but we can tap and hold on the screen. As you know, there are various uh, static wallpapers and live wallpapers you can choose from. Uh, usually a carrier or manufacturer will load up a custom live wallpaper with their device. For some reason, uh, the Droid X2 does not have a custom live wallpaper. Uh, it does have the default live wallpapers, but uh, you don't have that famous Droid Red Eye live wallpaper or anything like that loaded up. Of course, you can uh, set folders, shortcuts to apps, uh, bookmarks, contacts, that sort of thing. And then we have our default Android widgets. Let's go ahead and cycle through the Motorola widgets just so you can see uh, what kind of widgets you get here. So. Uh, most of these I have loaded up on the home screen, so I'll go through that in a bit. But we'll just scroll down this list so you can see there is a sticky note widget, which pretty much puts like a post-it note on your home screen, and you can type out different notes for yourself, weather, Wi-Fi, world clock. So let's go back, and here we have some loaded up here. Uh, we have various uh, wireless toggle widgets, so we can... Uh, enable or disable the GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or airplane mode. And here's a simple weather widget. If we tap on it, it takes us into this weather application. And we can add multiple locations, which is nice. We get a nice uh, background picture of the weather. And here's the forecast down here. If you tap on it, you can toggle between that. And if you want to access the AccuWeather, AccuWeather website, uh, for the extended and detailed forecast, you can do that as well. Now if we go back, we'll swipe over. Here is a social media widget, so we can add Twitter, MySpace, and Facebook accounts, so we can see various uh, status updates in here. Here's a calendar widget. Tap on that. Uh, it looks like it is flag day right now. Uh, let's go ahead and back out of there. And here's another social media widget. Uh, this one is for uh, pictures, so you can add uh, various networking accounts and it'll display pictures there. Swipe over. This is a simple date and clock widget. Very convenient to have on there. Here are some default Google widgets for search and music. And here's a nice little RSS widget. So let's tap on that. I have smartktai.com loaded up in there, and you can swipe between various articles, which is nice. You can check out the article list if you want an overview of that. 
Let's back out of there, but uh, that's not really when I, what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to uh, show you a cool feature here uh, that Motorola added to your widgets. So if you tap and hold, you know how you can move shortcuts and widgets across the screen and put them wherever you want. Well, notice these little arrows down here at the bottom. Those are there because you can actually resize these widgets. Now I know some third-party widgets have this ability, but uh, many uh, carrier and uh, manufacturer launchers don't have this ability, so it's good that Motorola has this uh, in their Blur UI. Okay, so let's press the menu button to see what kind of options we have at our disposal. So some of these are basic features you'll find across multiple Android devices like search, system settings, notifications, uh, change wallpaper, and the add button uh, we demoed earlier when you tap on the screen or tap and hold on the screen. But a cool feature here is profiles. So this allows you to quickly change between uh, multiple home screen layouts. So right now I have it set to home. Uh, you saw the different apps and widgets I had lined up on the home profile. But say I want to switch up the layout when I go into the work, I can do that and then easily switch to it uh, almost in an instant. So this is basically what Ryzen thinks your home screen should look like. Of course, you can add and delete apps and it'll save it for you. So let's jump back to the home profile. Of course, you can set a third one maybe for your weekend outings or something like that. And as you can see, all my apps are still here. Now at the bottom of the screen, you can see we have a fixed dock, so uh, these icons stay stationary. These are your most used applications, your go-to apps, so to speak. Now you can switch them out, so you can see three of them are interchangeable. You just drag and drop on there, and it'll swap it out. Of course, that last one is for your app tray. You'll need that to access your apps, so you can't change that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. Uh, this is the, the dialer and uh, contacts application, so you can see that it has a blue skin applied to it. You have your recent, uh, contacts, and favorites. Let's access the internet. And one thing I want to show you while we're in here are the different keyboards uh, available uh, to use. So we have our multi-touch keyboard, which is great. That means you can tap on one key and tap on another and it'll recognize uh, that second key press. But if you're like me, you may want to use the swipe keyboard. So if you haven't heard of swipe, oops, there we go. If you haven't heard of swipe, swipe is an innovative keyboard that allows you to swipe from letter to letter uh, without lifting up your finger. So you can uh, complete whole words without lifting your finger. So the only time you'll lift your finger is after you complete that word uh, to start the new word. So let me just put this into practice here. I'm going to type out smart k tie, And you can see I wasn't really accurate, but because it recognized the pattern I used uh, previously, it pulled it up right away, no problem. So over time, this becomes a very convenient, uh, efficient keyboard to use. So I typed in smart k tie. Let's go ahead and pull up some of those results and we'll jump to the Smart KTI website. Now this is over Verizon 3G, so obviously speeds will vary depending on uh, where you're located. But it looks like it pulled it up fairly fast. Let's go ahead and pinch to zoom. You can see pinch to zoom is smooth. You can also double tap to zoom in and zoom out and it looks like it reflows the text when you do it that way. Alright, so let's jump out of there, go back home, the email application. Of course you can jump through multiple folders and one thing I wanted to show you here is you can actually select multiple emails at once and move or delete them which is a good feature to have up front. You don't have to dig through uh, menus to access the multi-delete function. Uh, you guys know how it is uh, when you have multiple emails that you don't really want to read or maybe you've read them and you want to delete them. You can do that instantly. And finally we'll go to the app tray 
Now before I go through the lengthy list of applications, you can see there are two buttons on the right and left. The right one will actually take you to the Android market, so that's a convenience feature. And then the left one allows you to filter through all apps, recent and downloaded apps. You can also set uh, custom groups, which is a good feature to have there. Of course, if you tap and hold on the home button, you can access your recent applications at any time. Let's go ahead and go back to all apps and start looking through some of these. So we have an alarm and timer application. And before I go any further, uh, some of you may be concerned with bloatware or uh, preloaded applications. Now, there aren't too many on this device, but you can see we have some right at the top, Amazon Kindle, Amazon MP3. The good news is you can actually uninstall some of these. So here you are. If you just tap and hold, uh, you can uninstall the Amazon Kindle app if you don't use it. Backup Assistant, Blockbuster, for you movie fans out there. We already checked out the browser. Here is a simple calculator application. Calendar. We already rent, went through this earlier, but let me show you some of the different views. Go back out. Camcorder and camera. We actually checked both of these out uh, in a previous video, so be sure to look at that if you haven't yet. City ID. We already looked at contacts and dialer. DLNA app for sharing media between multiple devices, uh, email app, emergency alerts, file. So this is actually a built-in file manager. Uh, very cool that they added this uh, on the device out of the box. You don't have to download one from the Android market. FM player, you'll need a headset to listen to the radio. Gallery, and in a second you'll see pictures that I took and they plaster them in the background there. You can actually add various social networks so we have Facebook, Flickr, MySpace, Photobucket, Picasa, Twitter and then it'll grab pictures from those accounts. Uh, we can visit our library or camera roll. We have videos and photos. Jump back out of there. Gmail search. We have an instant messaging application. We have our Google Apps like Latitude, Google Maps with navigation. Uh, a demo of Let's Golf 2 comes on here. Messaging, mobile hotspot if you want to subscribe to that. Uh, Moon Chaser I'm actually reviewing right now. The music application. I don't think I have any music on here because I recently uh, hard reset this device. Let's go back out of there. My Verizon to check out your account information and usage. Navigation that goes along with the Google Maps app. News and weather. Let's actually check this out. Okay, so another weather application here. And then you have your news on the side. Moving on, we have NFL Mobile a demo of Need for Speed Shift, Quick Office, Rich Location, uh, Settings, looks like Skype Mobile is on here, uh, Slacker, Social Networking, here's a nice one, Task Manager, so we can manage all of our different apps, you can see we can end apps, add to auto end list, and cancel, jump back out, tasks, text messaging, vcast apps, uh, vcast music, looks like I activated something there, vcast music for downloading music, let's go ahead and jump into there and see what that looks like, let the little splash screen load up, alright so we'll just tap on there, see what that looks like, so you can sample songs and then buy them if you decide that you like them. Looks like that was Lady Gaga. Not really a fan, but who cares? So, Vcast videos, same thing with videos. Looks like you can watch TV shows and live sports on here. We'll jump out of there. Voice commands, voice search, voicemail, uh, VZ Navigator if you like using uh, Verizon's uh, navigating 
option over Google Maps and of course YouTube. Now one thing I didn't mention uh, throughout this review is that the Droid X2 is actually running Android 2.2.2 I believe. So if we go into our about phone options you can see Android 2.2.2. Now there is an update coming for Android 2.3 Gingerbread so don't let that prevent you from buying the device uh, know that the latest version of Android is coming so you'll be able to access all of the great new features so this was the software review portion of our Verizon Motorola Droid X2 coverage be sure to hit up smartktai.com for our final review of the Droid X2 which will be up shortly if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our cha channel if you haven't already Thanks for watching.